every once in a while you'll come across a repot where you pull out the orchid and then all of a sudden it doesn't have any roots i mean dang so what are you going to do about a rootless orchid how can you treat this orchid so it can grow new roots and become once again a healthy orchid i'm amanda matthews and thank you for watching this video at orchidaria so fortunately when it comes to a, a rootless orchid that does not have any roots whatsoever it the potting media has just degraded to a point either because of overwatering or too high of an acidity level or the medium just broke down and it wasn't repotted when it should have been there are several reasons that this can happen but a rootless orchid there is a technique to get it to grow roots faster and become healthier and this technique is called the sphag and bag method the big problem with a rootless orchid is that it will not have any roots to absorb humidity so therefore it will dehydrate faster now orchids can dehydrate through two main causes one is the leaf when it performs gas exchange those pores open to perform gas exchange a little bit of humidity is lost it's kind of like when you speak if you put your hand in, fr in front of your mouth it's not only air that's coming out, water droplets are also coming out. So you're actually losing humidity when you talk. Well, the orchid leaves do the same thing. When they perform gas exchange, every now and then when they open the stomata, which are the breathing mechanisms on the underside of the leaf, if it's a phalaenopsis, they will perform that gas exchange, which is important, but they also lose humidity. That's why a phalaenopsis orchid will open these stomata at night because the humidity is higher at night where they live. So when they do that, they're conserving their humidity inside the leaf. So here's the thought process behind the sphag and bag method if you can keep the orchid in an environment where the humidity is high so it can open those stomata and keep them open to provide gas exchange and to absorb humidity that way the orchid will not dry out and dehydrate until it produces new roots you want to keep this orchid hydrated long enough to grow new root now you've got a very tight time schedule here you got to act fast because an, a rootless orchid is a rescue project these leaves aren't going to be able to to carry the piano by themselves they need extra help that's why they have root our method here is to grow new roots but keep the orchid healthy where it doesn't dehydrate I will get to why root rot occurs at the end of this video. So if you're not sure what happened to your roots, keep watching until the end. I will get there. I want to make very clear this method is not to promote root growth. It's just to stall the dehydration until these roots grow. So if you have an active a product that will stimulate hormone growth, so you'll probably need a hormone or an enzyme that will do that that is an extra step if you want to now the sphag and bag method is purely to stall that dehydration so you're going to keep the roots hydrated until new roots are born how do we do that well the trick here is to keep the environment more humid than the leaf is so think about it if the environment is higher in humidity those pores are going to remain open they can perform the gas exchange that they need they'll be absorbing that humidity through the water vapor so the leaves are hydrated you're creating like a mini terrarium around your orchid so that it really holds that water inside and doesn't let those water droplets escape how long will this method take uh <laughs> Orchid care is slow, so it's going to take about a month to probably see a beginning level new root grow and then the second month to actually grow that root. So you're aiming at two months here to get a new root to grow. These steps to do this, number one, you're going to take all this old potting media out, just clean the orchid of everything. Do not have any potting media inside your your orchid step two you're going to remove all the bad roots you cannot have any signs of bacteria remember we're going to put this orchid with a little bit of sphagnum moss inside a bag and it's going to stay closed now this is the 
perfect environment for bacteria. So if you have a bad root that already has bacteria, it's gonna have a party. Step three, if you have that root hormone or that root enhancer enzymes or anything that is near your area, you're gonna soak the, your orchid in this product for an hour. And that's just gonna give the orchid a boost of hormones before it goes into a little quarantine bag and sits there. There are a few, and I'll list them up here, like Kelp Max, Dynagro, KLN, Rooting Concentrate, or Super Thrive are some of the most common rooting hormones and enzymes. But remember, don't expect miracles here. This is a rescue method and it, we, we are pushing our luck here. So it's better than doing nothing. You have to do something. So it can work and it cannot work. Step four, after you've soaked this orchid in these products, you will continue to remove any little dead material or any po old potting media that is still on the orchid because sometimes this potting media really likes to cling and you have to get rid of everything. Step six, you're going to get sphagnum moss. Now get a good quality sphagnum moss. If you want some hints and ideas, there is this video up here about sphagnum moss and how to get a good quality one. Just don't get one that dries out. You know, the cheaper you go, the worse it is. That's usually how it is. So get one that is good grade, which is either New Zealand sphagnum moss or has an AAA grade or five stars on it or the brand from Chile. Any type of good quality sphagnum moss, because remember this sphagnum moss is going to stay inside this bag with the orchid. Now you're going to get this sphagnum moss and you're going to soak it for an hour. If you don't soak it, the sphagnum moss is going to absorb the excess humidity from the orchid and that's not what you want to do. You want to do the opposite. You want the orchid to absorb the humidity from the sphagnum moss. So give that orchid a good hydration first and then you're going to squeeze out the excess water. Do not leave water dripping water inside your bag. I know we're in the middle of the steps, but I want to do a quick break to say if you are liking this video, please give it a thumbs up or please comment below so I just know what videos are working and what videos aren't working because after all, I am a new channel and I haven't been long on YouTube, so I'm still working all this out and seeing how to make better videos for you so your orchids can grow healthy and nice and bloom. So please hit that like button. Now here's the part that's interesting. You're not just gonna get an orchid and throw it in the bag with sphagnum moss here, orchid here, and then hope it works because yeah, you're gonna raise humidity. But what happens with this? The orchid sits constantly in water. It's constantly humid. The temperatures are high. What's gonna happen? Bacteria, 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 bacteria. You don't want your orchid in contact with this sphagnum moss. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take this orchid out of this bag. I'm gonna put a cup in the bottom of the bag and place the orchid on top this cup. So the orchid will have a place to receive that humidity, but it's not sitting in water. Orchids are not hydroponic like aquarium type submersible plants. I mean, some actually like to be on by waterfalls and rivers and streams. Not all orchids do. Most don't. A Phalaenopsis won't. It will like to be humid and then it will like to dry out. So when you put this cup in, inside, put the sphagnum moss on the bottom, put your cup and put the orchid on top that cup. That gives the space that your orchid needs. So the humidity is going to evaporate inside that pot. It's going to rise up to the leaves and but the leaves aren't in direct contact. That is the secret of a good sphag and bag method. And many people just, oh yeah, the sphag and bag. I'm gonna get my orchid, throw it in a bag, throw sphagnum moss in it, maybe missed it a little bit. And then what happens? Well, not much. The ninth, ninth step of sphag and bag method. You need to put your orchid in a place where it doesn't get that much light. Now, why is this important? Light is going to stimulate leaf growth. Well, you already have leaves. You don't need another leaf. So you do need light, yes. So you're not going to throw it underneath the bottom of the bookshelf and forget about it. No, don't do that. 
you need to put it in a low light place where it still does get light because it needs nutrients from the light. It still has chlorophyll. It's still going to produce energy from that light, but you want to focus on root growth. So in a low light situation, the orchid is going to work on roots, not on leaves. You also need a higher temperature place. Do not throw your orchid in the garage during winter and <laughs> freeze it. It needs that extra heat because remember, heat is going to speed up the process. Remember back in chemistry class when you learned that heat is an accelerant for most chemical reactions? So heat is going to speed up this process of creating new roots, of making those enzymes work harder, making that root hormone actually work harder and faster. Because remember, we're on a short, short time frame here. If we can't get those new roots to grow in one to two months, the orchid is not going to make it. Its leaves cannot sustain itself that long. And I do need to make a huge parenthesis here. If you use synthetic hormones and enzymes or whatever product you used, look on the label. It will have to say that on the label. Then do not use heat because this does the reverse process. So you can keep it in a cooler climate. That heat will interact with those enzymes and they'll actually do more harm than good. If, and the heat will break down those chemical reactions faster. So if you're using a synthetic hormone, enzyme, whatever, don't raise the heat. That's the big parentheses here. Number 10, leave your orchid in a forgotten place because we have a tendency as plant people to go and look, how you doing? Don't do that. You, you need to really, really, if you did this method strictly by the book, you need to keep your orchid in a place and forget about it. Leave it there for a month. The more you touch it, the more you pull out of the bag, the more you flip it over, the more you open the bag and close the bag and let that humidity out. You're doing nothing for your orchid. So leave it for a month. And I know that hurts because we are attached to our orchids and we have this like little connection to them. It's like, ah, get in contact. But do not touch your orchid for a month. After a month, you can look at it. Take a look at the sphagnum. Is your sphagnum still humid? Is it wet? Is it overly wet? Is it dry? If it Depending on all these, you can either mist it, you can, you can trade out this sphagnum. Only after a month will you look and see how your orchid is doing. Another thing that you need to do is make sure that there is a little opening in your bag to have some gas exchange. If you seal that bag off, like in a zippy bag, and seal it all the way, well, you're just creating mold. <laughs> and you have a nice mold collection now instead of a, a healthy orchid. That's not our point, that's not our goal. When do you not use this method? Well, the sphagnum bag, remember, is to grow new roots. It's an extreme measure to raise that humidity level, but if you already have like one or two good roots, don't use this method because you're, it, the probability that it's going to go wrong with the excess hydration inside your bag is, very high. I mean, this is not a daily method that you should be using constantly. It's an extreme method just to keep the hydration up until new roots are grown. Now, once you have one or two or three roots, I suggest switching it to a hydroponic system because then you can keep an eye on the roots to make sure that they're growing well because the hydroponics is also going to raise that humidity without degrading your potting material inside the pot. If you're not sure about what hydroponic method to use, you can watch this video up here about semi-hydro and full hydroponics, the difference between those two. If you haven't seen this video up here about cinnamon, how it reacts to the roots and when you should use it, take a look at that video. And this video down here talks about about the 13 signs of a healthy orchid. Also, if you have not subscribed to our channel, the circle in the middle right there is the subscribe button. You can click on that and you will be subscribed. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the comments below.